How's it going everyone, Mario here. In this video we're gonna answer a few questions that's been asked on a repeated basis last week. Should you buy puts and short this rally? Or should you participate in this rally and buy calls? We will go in detail and try to answer those questions in this video. We are looking at the daily charts of SPY here. We had a great week. Something interesting to uncover here is the divergence in between different sectors. While some sectors outperform the SPY, the sectors like financials, industrials, energy and materials lag big time. But on Friday, all the sectors closed in the positive pushing S&P 500 or SPY BOW 390. Now the question is, should you short or buy puts on this rally? Let me say this, it's better to short once you see the sellers show up than blindly shorting just because the stock is going higher and higher. To put it simple, just because the stock is down by a lot doesn't indicate you got to buy it and just because the stock is going up by a lot doesn't mean you have to go short and buy puts. Well, you can get lucky and buy the bottom or short the top, but luck is not the strategy and won't make money long term. That being said, SPY closed above 390 on Friday. Today we tried to push higher above the 20 SMA but got rejected immediately. SPY paid their dividends so the price is different now compared to that of the ES but it'll correct in a while. As long as the price is staying above 387, we can run a test to 394 which is the 20 SMA that you see, the blue line in the chart. About 394 open stores for filling the gap at 400 with the resistance at 398. But we are kind of overextended from a decent move which we had last week. That doesn't mean we won't keep pushing higher. This is why shorting the strength is not reliable. You'll never know when the sellers will show up. You're taking a shot in the dark hoping for things to play out in your way, which makes it a gamble. Above 400, SPY can push all the way to the declining 50 SMA at 405.81 or the bottom of the consolidation range which we had 3 weeks back between 407 and 417, remember that? We can run a test to 407. So if you blindly go short here before getting confirmation or you're gonna hold on to it till SPY went to like 407, it's a huge move to the upside from where it is right now. There is no point in holding and hoping for things to turn around. There is a time to go short. It is when SPY breaks the 5 day moving average at 385. Until then, there is no trades. Remember, we are in a downtrend. Rallies like this in a bear market is pretty common. Just like how calling the top in the price is useless in bull market, calling the bottom in bear markets is useless as well. Either 400 or 405 is where I expect the sellers to show up. If we do, we can establish some short positions over there for the next leg lower provided the sellers show up there. Yes, I know the fundamentals are bad. I would love to watch this shit crash and burn. I'm one of the biggest bears out there. But there is a time to go short. Buys shouldn't affect the trades you take. At the end of the day, price is the only thing that pays. So if you do want a short SPY, wait for it to break under 385, at least for now, at least from where it is trading right now. If it broke below 385, we have a nice trade to 380 and that is a 5 point move or the gap fill at 378. Pretty decent, huh? So wait for it to break below 385 before trying to call the top and I mean you can get lucky but as I said before, luck is not a strategy. Now to the next question. Where should you buy calls? After a strong week, I won't be surprised if we consolidate here for a while to wait for the 5 day moving average, which is the white line you see in the charts, to catch up to where the SPY is trading right now. If we do get a small pullback to 385 and hold it as support, it will open doors for the next move to the upside provided the 385 holds as support. If we fall below 385, it's kind of concerning to the longs as it shoots a flare up in the air to be cautious. Currently, the 5 day moving average is sitting at 376 and it will hold a support on the way to the downside. Mind you, this will start climbing higher and higher and higher if the price is consolidating or trading in range. Don't get overly bearish till we start closing candles below 5 day moving average. 
for now the target remains at 394 and the gap fill at 400. If you do want to go long, remember this, you are going long after a huge rally which we had last week. Probability of consolidation is way higher. So set your stops tight. So if you're going long on the market open on Tuesday, make sure to set your stops at 387. Because below 387, if you do know that we're going to go down to 385, and below 385, that's kind of concerning. So these are the two levels for you to go long on. So if you do pull back, watch out for 387 and watch out for 385. And if these two levels hold as support, that will give you some nice tradable opportunities to the upside on SPY. Now taking a look at QQQ or NASDAQ. What is going on in there? We had a strong close on Friday. We closed about 293.50, which was pretty decent. We closed about the 20 SMA, which is at 293.50. And uh, today it's kind of not so good, isn't it? Like we got rejected immediately at 297 at the market open and then pummeled down. The bulls didn't try even try to push it higher all the way to fill the gap at 300, which is kind of concerning. But as I said in SPY, it's not that bad considering the strong rally which we had for the past one week. Consolidation is pretty good. The thing which concerns me is they close under the 20 SMA at 293.50. If the bulls hold on to it, even in the pullback, just like what we did on SPY, that would have been something good to keep an eye on, but this shoots a flare up in the air for me. As I said before, one day of closing under 20 SMA is not something to base the predictions on. This might have obviously been a bear trap to trap the bears in thinking that we're going to go down only to like gap the market higher in the future session and open about 293.50 and then go all the way to fill that gap at 300 by tomorrow. Very much possible. But for now, there is nothing to draw conclusion on. But if you see it as a face value, it closed below 293.50 and if we open below 293.50 tomorrow, probability of us going all the way down to 287.21 or 285 to fill that gap is very much higher. Breaking below 285 is when you need to start getting a little bit concerned about QQQ. If we start breaking below 285, it opens doors for 281 or 280 to the downside. And to the 280, it puts us back on the box zone, which is at 276 to 280 zone. Below that, we might run a test all the way to the lows, which we had on June 16th. That is not good look for bulls at all. But for now, as long as the price stays about 293.50, the target still remains at 297 and 300 and the 50 SMA at 305. But if the price goes below 285, that is concerning for bulls and it took, takes the bull case off the window because it opens doors for that zone which we have between 280 and 276 to the downside. Remember, we are not in a bull market. We are in a bear market. Bounces like this in a bear market are pretty common. Do not go betting against the trend thinking that the bottom is in. As I said in the video beginning, there is no point in calling a top in a bull market and there is no point in calling a bottom in the bear market. It is in a downtrend until it is not. And let's leave it at that. As always, take high probability trades, manage the risk wisely, join the Discord, join the Patreon, link is down below in the description. Leave a like, subscribe, I'll see you guys in the next one.